Hello, I'm April Yvonne Garrett, and this is Amplify Baltimore. Two schools have been educating Baltimore's girls for nearly two centuries, producing some of the world's most incredible women. Today, we visit with Western High School and the Institute of Notre Dame. We're here today with the principal of Western High School, Alicia Trusty. Alicia, thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for coming. I've never been to the campus of Western High School. As a city graduate, you know this is kind of off limits for us. I'm a fan of the Doves, but you know I don't mess with that other school. Tell us how old this school is and what the mission of educating the girls is. Western High School has been educating young girls and producing fine young women for 167 years wow. now. Okay. We're the oldest all-girls public high school in the United States. Currently, we have a student population of 1,003 students. Our mission is to provide a rigorous college preparatory program to young girls that will lead to um, advanced coursework. Why is educating girls so important? We hope that our young ladies will demonstrate strong leadership skills and will mm. become very competitive as they compete with their peers to um, gain admissions and acceptance into some of the most prestigious and selective colleges and universities across the country. What is the importance of educating girls? We feel that it's very important for us to provide an environment where we capitalize on known proven strengths of girls. We're able to provide an environment where they feel nurtured and supported so that they're able to produce their best work and exemplify some of their best qualities. You have a host of women who've graduated from Western High School who are making incredible contributions to the world. I can name a few that I know. Uh, Jennifer Richardson, who is a MacArthur Genius Grant recipient. Um, clearly our current mayor, Stephanie Rawlings-Blake, who is a very proud Western Dove and Benjamin Todd Jealous, the current NAACP president. His mother, Ann Todd, was one of the students who integrated Western High School. Tell us about some other women who have made contributions to greater society who graduated from Western. Uh, we also have outgoing councilwoman Belinda Conaway, okay. former state superintendent Nancy Grasman, ah. who was also a Western graduate. I didn't know that. Yes, absolutely. So what is the future of Western High School? Historically, in the past, Western High School has been a national powerhouse mm. academically and athletically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, we hope to be able to restore some of that fine tr tradition and legacy mm -hmm. once again. Mm -hmm. We look forward to uh, providing exciting, competitive experiences for our young girls so mm -hmm. that they're able to compete nationally mm -hmm. and that Western High School will once again be ranked as one of the premier learning institutions in the country. Well, thank you so much for sharing the history and the present and where you hope to go in the future. You have so many wonderful graduates who are doing great things across the world. We appreciate the way you guys are amplifying Baltimore. Thank you. Thank you for coming. I am honored to be here with Western Dove extraordinaire Victoria Stevenson. She is a 1968 graduate of this institution and she is also the math department chair. Ms. Stevenson, thank you so much for being with us today. You're welcome. You are history. Well, thank you. You have dedicated your entire life to teaching and to being a part of the Western family. Tell me why that was important for you. Um, it was originally my mother's decision ah. for me to come to Western okay. because my sister had already come, come ah, here. So there's a family lineage exactly. here. Okay. Right. But I'm very pleased and blessed that I did come uh -huh. because it prepared me for college and it prepared me for the career. Tell me how Western has changed over time. Well, as far as um, the curriculum and the type of students we uh -huh. have, they are still sh the same. Uh -huh. We still have the best students in Baltimore City. We still have a high-powered curriculum mm -hmm. that prepares our girls for college. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And as far as tradition, um, we still have the long white gowns for graduation. Yes, gorgeous. And we still have some of the other old um, traditions like revel and a couple of other things that are still based on the old tradition. Well, you clearly value a single-sex, all-female educational environment. Tell me why that's important to you. It's important to me because it gives the student an opportunity to excel, the mm. student being a female. Mm -hmm. um, she has the possibility now to become a leader. Mm -hmm. It strengthens her leadership skills. Mm -hmm. It strengthens her personality. Mm -hmm. It strengthens her confidence and yes. her ability to do things. Mm -hmm. So I think it's less of a hassle mm. for the student to mm -hmm. be in a single sex environment. You've been here for quite some time. I know this is a very unfair question, but you have educated so many incredible young women from this school. Can you tell me about a few of them that you remember um, for the skills that they developed at the school and for the contributions they're making to the greater society? Okay, well, this is my 39th oh my year goodness. for teaching at Western. 
and over the years I've taught students who have um, excelled in their profession. For instance, our mayor, mm -hmm. Stephanie Rawlings yes, Blake, was mayor. one of my students. Yes, it's wonderful. I taught her trigonometry. Did you really? And she was a good student. She was a good student. That's good yes, to know. She was a good student. Because we got some things she's got to handle, and she's doing a good job, so thanks <laughs> yes, for saying that. Yes, and she you know, exhibit those leadership mm. qualities when Early she was on. here at Western. Yeah. Yes. That's and fantastic. then I have other students um, who excelled in the field of engineering. Mm. Her name is Gina Yip. Mm -hmm. She got a scholarship from Western to go to MIT. Wonderful. And she's doing great. Uh -huh. Another student, Melissa Young, who went to Morgan's Engineering School, mm -hmm. and she was one year the Black Engineer of the Year. Wow. And she's currently wor working for Boeing wow. out um, you know, on the West Coast. Okay. So that's just a few. Well, I have to tell you as a proud Baltimore City College graduate, mm -hmm. but I've always had a kinship and a relationship and a deep affection and respect for Western, and you are clearly one of the reasons why that is the case. So thank you so thank much you. for your commitment to single sex education, but your commitment to this particular institution, okay. and thank you so much for amplifying Baltimore in this way. Thank you. I'm happy to be here with two Western Dove seniors, Brianna Smith and Devante Patel. Thanks for being with me. Thanks for, Thanks for having us. You could have attended any high school in the city and you chose an all girls high school, Western high school. Why? I chose Western High School because two of my family members went here ah. and it's an all girls school so I know that they could offer me an education that no other institute could. Ah. And since there was no boys, it was less distraction. Oh, I see. And Devonchi, tell me why you chose Western. I chose Western because first of all, Western is a dove nation. Okay. Any female student would be lucky to go to attend Western actually. Um, Western, I've, I've come to know that Western is a very enhanced, you know, curriculum mm. active school and it has many, you know, activities and stuff that I'm really interested in. Along with that, I've noticed for all the four years that I've been here, I've noticed that Western is a very good, you know, sisterhood kind of school as well. Any other school that I think that if I would have attended any other school, any other institute, I probably would have not had the experiences I had here. And we have many AP courses as well as honors course courses here at Western. I'm pretty sure by taking these courses, it will get me ready for college. Speaking of getting ready for college, you both are seniors, so what are your college prospects? Well, I'm not pretty sure where I want to go, but I know I'm applying to eight colleges. The eight colleges I'm applying to are Mount St. Mary's, College Park, Georgetown, Howard University, Hampton University, Boston University. I'm thinking about George Washington and I'm thinking about your alumni, Canyon, Canyon College. College. Yes. Awesome, good, good, good. And then my fallback school is U University of Maryland Eastern Shore. Okay, wonderful. And what about you, Devante? As, as for now, I also have eight colleges on the list. Um, uh -huh. Johns Hopkins University, University of Maryland, University of Maryland, Baltimore County, Towson, Loyola University, University of Buffalo, York University, and also Mount Series, Mount St. Mary's University. And you are interested in studying what? Pre-med. And you? Biology major, because I want to eventually be a pediatric oncologist. Wow. Yeah. This is exciting. So you believe that in the time that you've been here for four years, the single sex education has been extraordinarily valuable. What would you tell other young women who are middle school aged who are looking for high schools? Why would you tell them that Western is a good choice? Well, Western is a good choice because it's not a normal high school experience. Mm. It's not a bad high school experience. We just have, like we have pep rally, but we have no football team, mm -hmm. which makes it a unique high school experience. Sure. The sisterhood is in there because you always have someone to fall back on. Right. You always have a support system. You always, it's, it's just a wonderful experience. Mm. Coming from middle school, pretty sure every every female student coming into Western High School, they would want to know what makes what's so special about Western. I would say that Western is one of the best female high school, you know, all around, you know. And um, I'll also say that we have the sisterhood here. Like you have your teachers, your principal. We are the teachers are very friendly as friendly as well. They're always taking care of you, you know. And the sisters, your friends here, they're your sisters. You mm -hmm. do everything together. We have a step team. We have dance team. Mm -hmm. and like Brian Brianna said, we don't have a football team, but that's what makes um, Western special. Well, I think what makes Western special is the two of you. Oh. I'm so excited that we were able to talk with you today about your experiences, and I wish you both the best on your college pursuits, and I'll be writing your recommendation for Kenyon. We are here in the heart of East Baltimore 
at the Institute of Notre Dame with its president, Dr. Mary Funke. Mary, thanks so much for being with us today. Thanks for coming. This institution is 165 years old in the heart of East Baltimore. Tell us a little bit about your mission and how many young girls you're educating. Well, we are a Catholic girls preparatory school mm -hmm. founded by the School Sisters of Notre Dame right here on this site. Mm. And we um, reflect the vision of the School Sisters in um, Education for Transformation. We prepare young women to be very self-directed, to um, have the ability to discern, to become lifelong learners, and to really make a difference in the world. There are several schools in the Baltimore area committed to single-sex, faith-based education. What sets IND apart from the others? Well, I think the fact that we have such a strong history mm. and traditions here that have gone through um, over 7,000 um, young women over the past um, 164 years, and our legacy um, is very strong between grandmothers, mothers, you know, daughters. Um, I think um, makes us very, very different and connected to mm -hmm. Baltimore in a very unique way. But we have a very strong core liberal arts program. Mm. But we have incorporated technology in a very smart way that mm. goes back to our um, mission or our vision to prepare young women to make a difference in the, in the world. So three years ago we put in our tablet program and it is um, fully integrated into the uh, curriculum, very, very um, smart technology. Uh -huh. um, we have put in the Project Lead the Way program, the Biomed program, and in the fall we anticipate putting in the engineering program. So uh, what I like about those biomed and engineering programs and the ta tablet programs is preparing um, young women to go into the sciences um, not only is that, I think, good for women and good for those disciplines, but as you know, um, as Americans, um, there's a tremendous deficit of young people going into those sure. um, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics programs. So the fact that we have women prepared to go into college into those with this very solid faith base, yes. that be able to tell the difference between right and wrong, mm -hmm and the fact that they've already had strong experiences. Mm -hmm. It is clear from what you've communicated with us so far that you really believe in the transformative power of educating girls. Yeah. Tell me how your curriculum and student life here is shaped by that notion. When you look at the statistics of um, children that are educated in single sex um, education, they, their um, test scores, um, their self-confidence, their self-esteem, um, their um, a uh, sense of social justice, of terms of right and wrong, are significantly higher. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think that women come um, out um, knowing how to compete in the world, whether it's college or beyond, because they are so self-reliant yes. and so self-confident and they're mm -hmm. so focused on their studies that they learn those analytical abilities far more um, and, and in a far more advanced ways than their um, and their counterparts. And I think one of the things that struck me very on, early on here is the leadership opportunities mm -hmm. that they have here that they simply don't get um, in co-ed classes because of the girl thing of deferring to boys. Right. And they don't have that here. And the faculty teach those skills, but then very much give them the opportunity to exercise the leadership. I was struck when coming here that you are in the heart of East Baltimore, directly across from the Latrobe Projects. How does that shape your mission as a school, your connectivity to the community, and more importantly, how does it affect the girls? Uh, well, first of all, we were here before the Latrobe um, projects. Yeah. They mm -hmm. are more recent neighbors. So if you look at the early pictures mm -hmm. of the Institute, this was all farm land that ah. was uh, around here. So it's really pretty fun to okay. look at those early pictures. But of course, the building, ha the facade of the building has not changed. Mm -hmm. But I think um, that being in the fifth district um, is actually is actually a very strong point of the school. Okay. Um, I think that our students are mostly coming from insular mm -hmm. backgrounds, and when they're coming to school here, they get a sense of urban living, and they mm. get the sense of issues of urban living while still being very safe. Right. Our campus is very safe. Our building is very safe. Um, we work very well with the Eastern District Police. Um, and I'm a fan. The, yes. <laughs> I'm a fan. Yes. In fact, the commissioner's daughter, the police commissioner's daughter goes to school I did here know that. As a sophomore. Commissioner Bill Phillips is great yeah. for Baltimore. Yeah. So, you know, but so the safety factors, you know, there's sort of this folklore of safety factors, frankly, 
there is not a safety concern here. Mm -hmm. we, this, you know, we're doing all the right things for students, but going back to the advantage of it, we do a lot of outreach in the community mm -hmm. in, um, in terms of uh, tutoring children nice. in, the, um, in the Eastern District. Um, we have uh, one of our sisters, Sister Hilde, who's been here 63 years, who has a group called Hilde, um, Hilde's Helpers, mm -hmm. and they will go out to the community, um, and especially around the holidays, and do food and, and clothing and holiday gifts. So mm -hmm. it becomes a very natural and easy way to um, practice social justice right mm -hmm. in our own um, front yard. How do you think the community sees the institution? I think they're very respectful mm. of the institution. I th you know, and I, I would witness that when I'm um, in the community, they'll stop and talk, I'll wave. Um, we recently sent out a community letter to let them know what was going on through the first semester, and I got a phone call immediately saying thank you, because it nice. helps them plan. When we're having major events, mm -hmm. it helps them plan their parking, mm -hmm. um, you know, and things like that. I've also, it's been interesting, some evenings, I'm usually here fairly late, some evenings I will be leaving, and um, Sister Hildy will be in the office, and women in the community are there talking with her. Ah. So I think that there's this excellent, I think there's respect sure. from about that, but there's actual hands-on that's happening with our students. Uh -huh. And we are um, uh, um, sort of, you know, a place that people know that, you know, if there's a high need that we'll do everything we can. Out of your 7,000 graduates, you have some extraordinary women doing incredible things in the world. Two of my favorites are clearly Senator Barbara Mikulski, who just won the National Women's Achievement Award this past month. and the former Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi. Tell us about some of your other notable graduates and what they're doing in the world. Well, we have um, graduates who have gone into all fields right. of life. I've actually, I don't think that we have an astronaut, but uh, yes. <laughs> she, yeah, yes. that's she's right. coming, yes. especially with yes. the STEM Academy well, the that program, she's gonna vote, Yes, right. well, the program <laughs> has been, you know, bridge cut, but, um, you know, doctors, lawyers, teachers, psychologists, psychiatrists. Mm -hmm. We have a professional basketball player. Really? Who is that? It's Andrea Jones, uh -huh. professional basketball oh. player in the European League. That's Eventually awesome. wants to be back here in the States, but how great that is that yeah. she's, um, she started with Paris and now she's in Bel um, Belgium. Wow. You know, so uh -huh. very, very good. Mm -hmm. And she has been back helping us with summer programs, summer basketball. Um, programs. What do you think the future of faith-based single-sex education is and how does the Institute of Notre Dame fit into that? I want to really focus that um, answer on um, the Institute of Notre Dame because frankly sure. I think that we um, are, um, forgive this, but uh, um, ahead of the pack. Sure. I think that's partially because of our, our um, staying power, mm -hmm. 165 years all the traditions and the heritage in our 7,000 um, alumni who mm -hmm. support us well and will continue to do that. I think our academic standing is just very strong. And while we, we respect our history and our traditions, we always look to reflect or that our academic programs reflect um, the needs of our, of our country. Mm. And we prepare women to be strong moral leaders mm. um, to um, uh, provide direction to city and nations. So I think the fact that we do it well, we always look to see on how we can do it better. Our numbers are up. I think that they'll continue um, to go up. And frankly, I think God has a plan and we're part of that plan. Mm. Mm. I really get that sense from everything that you've shared with us today. I know that the alums who are looking at this segment right now are smiling. And I think the people of Baltimore who are really not aware of all that you do, where you're located, and the graduates that you have who are shaping the world are going to really feel proud that Institute of Notre Dame has been in this community for 165 years amplifying Baltimore. So thank you for sharing that with us today. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Mm -hmm. For 17 years, the young ladies at the Institute of Notre Dame have had the great benefit of having a wonderful Spanish teacher, Mr. Bill Brown. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Why have you made it a commitment to teaching girls in a faith-based institution for 17 years? I, I think if we back up a little bit, it's why teach mm. for so long. I feel like my commitment is in education. Uh -huh. I happen to be in an institution that is a faith-based single-sex institution, but particularly teaching girls for me is important leadership aspect in terms of that is an important skill uh, to develop for the future of our society. And I think that that equality, that gender equality among everything else that we're trying to teach is so important 
And for me, that's just a, a part of what I'm teaching. Well, it's clear that you've had a strong commitment to the intellectual pursuits of this institution. So I know that you advise many co-curricular activities. How does that dovetail with what you're offering academically, but also how does it build the character of the young ladies that you're working with? Well, first of all, I, I, I moderate our student government. And, and for me, I think that's so important to give students a, a space to develop leadership skills, to organize activities, to plan activities, to work with other students, to work with faculty and staff, and to look ahead and see what, are, what do we need to do to develop these activities. What does leadership mean? Leadership not being a top-down kind of activity, but yeah. leadership as a skill where we're talking about communication, where we're talking about working together, we're talking about so many skills that are important in society. And that, I think, is what's part of student government at, at IND. How have the girls changed over time? <laughs> It's an interesting question over the years that some things have changed, but some things haven't. I, like different technologies, different toys. Um, yeah. But I, I think that in general, the, the girls that come here are, it, it's the challenge of education during the high school years, during teen years, and that involves working with um, some of the, the, the self-esteem issues and trying to get students to be, believe in themselves, mm -hmm. to work together, and to believe in what they can do, the power that they have to change society. There's an atmosphere here that I think is, is very special in terms of a spirit, uh, a sense of community that is not just talked about, but, it, but is very real. And um, I, I believe that's true. And, and, and I, it's part of the SSND charism, but I think it's something that's just we work on in terms of creating an atmosphere that is conducive to not just learning, but to working together, developing skills such as leadership. And, and that's something that we just kind of try to keep pushing. Well, Bill, thank you so much. 17 years of commitment to IND, and thank you so much for amplifying girls in Baltimore. Thank you. We're here with the future of the Institute of Notre Dame. Deanna Melvin, a sophomore, and Jenny Staub, a senior. Ladies, thanks for being with me. No problem. Thanks for having us. <laughs> Why did you choose a faith-based, single-sex, all-girls school in the middle of East Baltimore? Um, I think it was when I came here to visit as a shadow day. That's what really brought me in because I saw all the sisterhood. I saw unity. Mm. I saw friendships that seemed like they would last forever mm. and I saw tradition like when I came here and I shadowed I met my hostess's big sister and I saw that they had a strong bond and I was like oh I want that and my hostess told me that from when she shadowed to now that like it's just an amazing experience just to be in the school that so many girls have been in and so many girls have just walked these floors it's just been great. Do you feel the same way, Jenny? I do. My mom went here, so oh. that definitely helped. Um, she also had three siblings that went here, so growing up, I heard a lot about it. When I came here to Shadow, it was actually a Thanksgiving day, which we oh. have. It's like, Hildy will make a dinner for us, or a lunch mm -hmm. for us, and um, she'll serve it to us for like seven dollars. And we all get to eat it. And of course, I got it free because I was a shadow. Mm -hmm. But I definitely saw how together everyone was and how everybody can unite to become one during like a time where everyone needs to be. Now, the difference between what you would experience at a single sex education institution that isn't faith based is really remarkable. And when we talk to people in this community, you really get a sense that there's a character education that's happening here. Tell me how being a part of this institution has really shaped how you see the world, um, issues of social justice, what your commitment is to people outside of who you are and, and the people that you're connected to. I mean, it really shows me not to judge anyone. Hmm. It shows me that everyone is basically the same, whether you look different or whether you look the same you're all one person mm -hmm. and God created us in one way. Mm. What about you? Um, at first I was like, this is a Catholic based school and I'm Baptist and mm -hmm. I'm like, mm -hmm. I, how am I going to like go through liturgy and not know like how to say prayer or something? Mm. Cause it's a totally different thing. Cause I grew up in just a uh, AME church. Mm -hmm. And so when I came here and I did my first liturgy, I was like, man, this really makes me think about like, my religion, just living 
your life in response to Jesus is just hmm. just brings all of us together. This school is in the middle of Baltimore City, in the middle of East Baltimore, a neighborhood that has had a challenging reputation. I've talked to people in the community about the school's relationship to the community. What do you think about the students' relationship to the community? Definitely, I think we give to the community. So I think we're one with the community. We do drives like the Halloween candy drive mm -hmm. as a peer minister here. Um, we collect candy from every homeroom mm -hmm. and we'll give them to the neighbors across the street. Mm -hmm. um, we'll also do a Thanksgiving drive where we bring in canned goods, where we give them to them. And we put like turkeys and canned goods for Thanksgiving on their doorstep. Um, I definitely think that they appreciate us and we appreciate them. So mm -hmm. I don't think we have a conflict. Yeah, how do you feel about that? Well, there are surrounding schools, surrounding elementary schools and middle schools that we take part in. Like there's a project kind that I kind of helped out with and it really let me see and get out of the community and just help other kids who don't have the same education that I did. But I know that like they can still, they're, that they're able to do that. And mm -hmm. also there's a program that we do during the summer called Tamarind. And I know that like it's so much fun just to be with all these girls who are just so driven on like having fun and going after what they want and they're all young and it's just it's just a good way to learn for me and for them what would you tell young ladies who are interested in attending a single sex faith-based education school i think well coming here i didn't know anyone i mm -hmm. came from a school in the county that I didn't really know anybody coming in here. And I felt at home here. Mm. Um, the girls definitely brought me in. And my first day, not knowing anybody, they invited me to sit with them. Mm. I had I, everyone in my senior class I'm friends with. There's mm -hmm. not one person that I don't like. Mm -hmm. And I really think that's great. You can create a sisterhood and tradition and just, it's amazing. Awesome. What do you think? Well, I would say is that don't judge by like the, for, the name or being a single sex based faith Catholic school, whatever, don't judge by that. You have to come here and you have to see the unity, the sisterhood, the tradition, and everything that IND has to offer. And then you can make your decision on if you like it or not. But my opinion is that the unity, the sisterhood, and the tradition is what makes IND so like amazing. It's like, I'm not trying to like brag about my school or anything, but I, I think you are. <laughs> <laughs> but like, like, I know it's like the girls who want to come here, who are even considering coming here, like just come here and just see what you think and just see where you fit into the IND community and where you like want to go, even if you go here, if you don't want to go here. What do you want to give the world when you leave this place? Where do you want to go? What are you, are you um, looking at colleges right now? I am. Tell I'm us. looking at I want to be, I love kids. Okay. So I definitely, IND has helped me with that, with mm -hmm. the Project Kind, like Deanna talked about. I go up the street and I help kids who, they just stay after school and I help them do their homework. I help them do arts and crafts. There's Tamarin here. There's so many different things that you can do with kids that I just love. Like I want to be an uh, early childhood education teacher. Yeah. And I definitely think that like IND helps you prepare for those kinds of things mm -hmm. and things like this, like an interview, like mm -hmm. they help you socially. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So great. Yeah. And what do you want to contribute? Um, well, what I want to be is a singer. And I know like, why would you come to IND to be a singer? I'm like, well, IND has several arts programs here. And there's so much you can do. Like we have a talent show, we have select choir, we have gospel choir, we have acapella choir. We have all this stuff that just allows me to go out and perform in public places or do solos or whatever and get out there like um, for gospel choir. I'm in gospel choir and I like, I play, I play the piano for them occasionally or I'm in um, keyboarding because I also do keyboarding and that's really helped with my skills. I've realized things that I didn't know before. And so it's, I really like it. Well, the two of you have clearly given us a really great perspective on what it's like to be a student here, but also why it's a valuable experience. I thank you so much for sharing that. And I thank you so much for amplifying what's so great about Girls in Baltimore. Thanks for being with us today. You're welcome. You're welcome. And thank you for being with us today. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Amplify Baltimore. Remember, we, the people of Baltimore, possess all we need to make our city thrive. With every thought, word, and action, each of us has the power to create the city we want. 
With this power, I hope you will always choose to amplify Baltimore. Oh, 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 oh,